Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in the 1999 Champions League final, David Trezeguet in Euro 2000, and Henrik Larsson in the 2006 Champions League final are all records of heroic moments when substitutes came in and decided football matches. But none of those appearances beat Mario Götze's late victory in extra time to win Germany's fourth World Cup in 2014. Who do you think are the best super subs of all time? At the recent Qatar 2022 World Cup, substitutes scored or assisted about 30% of all goals. This is more than the last three World Cup tournaments. So beginning from the most recent World Cup, here is a compilation of the most impactful subs in the World Cup. The recent final in Qatar had it all, an Mbappe hat-trick, Messi magic, late drama, comebacks and history on the line. Argentina won the trophy in the end, but France's game-changing substitution almost killed the dream. France started the game with the front three of Mbappe, Giroud and Dembélé. These were the same front three that had taken them to the final, but in this game, Argentina's defence seemed to have them under control. Argentina had dominated all parts of the game, to the extent that after 35 minutes, Messi and Di Maria had put them 2-0 up. France hadn't even registered a shot on target. Manager Deschamps was clearly unhappy with what he had seen and made a double sub before halftime. He took off Dembele and Giroud, putting Colo Muani and Marcus Turam into the fray. And that was the game changer. After the sub, France eventually found their spark and they equalised with two quick goals and took the game into extra time. The extra time was perhaps more crazy than the 90 minutes, but France's super subs helped take France to penalties after a magnificent 3-3 display. Argentina went on to win the shootout, but Deschamps' substitutions were certainly inspired. Early in the World Cup group stages, we saw some shock results when certain teams punched above their weight. One was Saudi Arabia, defeating the eventual champions Argentina. But another was Japan, coming from behind to defeat Germany. And they did so in style, with substitutes scoring both goals. It was Japan's first time coming from behind to win a World Cup match. Germany looked set to win the game after scoring first in the 33rd minute through Gundogan. They had dominated large parts of the match until Japan produced two tactical changes from nowhere. Ritsu Doan came on in the 71st minute and equalised in the 75th, and Takuma Asano scored the 83rd minute winner after he had come on for Daisen Maeda in the 57th minute. Vincent Abubakar came off the bench to score and assist for Cameroon, who came from two goals behind to draw against Serbia in a World Cup Classic. It was Jean-Charles Castelletto who opened the scoring for Cameroon in the game. Serbia, however, had bounced back to make it 3-1, with goals from Pavlovic, Milinkovic Savic and Aleksandr Mitrovic. But the super sub striker this time was from Cameroon. Abubakar came on in the 55th minute to make the difference. He scored one of the goals of the tournament, a magical scoop over the on-rushing Serbia goalkeeper in the 63rd minute. He then provided an assist as well for Chupo Moting's equaliser just three minutes later. One of the games of the group stages was helped by one of the tournament's most inspired subs. We're back with Japan again. They will surely be remembered for their heroic performance at the 2002 World Cup. Their fans won the hearts of many with their usual practice of cleaning the stadium after each game. However also, the football that their team produced was amazing. And it shocked everyone, coming from behind to defeat Germany and Spain with huge impact coming from the subs bench. Ritsu Doan came again from the bench to equalise for Japan against Spain. His work against Germany was only the start. He scored in the 40th minute with a thumping shot. And three minutes later, Ao Tanaka scored one of the most controversial goals in football to complete the comeback. That goal pushed Japan to a surprising top of the group finish in the group of death with Germany, Spain and Costa Rica. An incredible achievement. It was also the first time that they finished top of their group since 2002. 
and again the first time that they have progressed to the knockout rounds in consecutive World Cup tournaments. The records didn't stop for Japan. Argentina vs the Netherlands is always a game that's characterised by a lot of emotion. Some of hate and revenge in this instance. Both teams have met six times in the World Cup where Holland have won two and Argentina won. The other three games ended in a draw after 90 minutes. But two of these three draws were in the knockout stages where Argentina on both occasions went on to win. So technically Argentina have triumphed on three of the six occasions. There are always scores to settle when these teams meet. In their quarter-final in 2022, Argentina were in a comfortable two-goal lead until the 78th minute when White Weghorst came onto the field and made it a nightmare for the Argentine defence, scoring two late goals to deny Argentina their safe passage to the next round. The game went into extra time and the dream nearly died. However, luckily for Argentina, they would go on to win the shootout. In the 1970 World Cup quarterfinal between West Germany and England, England's forward Bobby Charlton had dominated the game. He closed Franz Beckenbauer down several times to ensure that Germany's defenders were kept under immense pressure whilst also providing immense attacking threat on the ball and England were leading 2-0 at the time. Alf Ramsey, England's manager, took him off to save him for the semi-final and what happened? England lost 3-2. There was no semi-final for them to play because taking Charlton off was a massive error, a substitute that went the wrong way. In 1970, England were one of the best sides not to win the World Cup, possibly better than their own team that won the title in 1966. England had only lost very narrowly to Brazil earlier in the tournament, but a draw would have been a fair scoreline. The 1970 Brazil team are regarded as one of the best champions of all time and yet England managed to match them all the way. Taking Charlton off cost us the chance to see two of the best teams ever playing out a great final. In Russia's 2018 World Cup round of 16, Belgium produced one of the greatest comebacks in the knockout stages. Japan looked set to produce another staggering result as they cruised into a 2-0 lead at the beginning of the half. But thanks to the impactful substitutes from Roberto Martinez, that produced the change and the needed results. Belgium began the comeback with a goal from Jan Vertonghen in the 69th minute, just four minutes after Nasser Chadli and Marouan Fellaini had entered the game. Both substitutes then scored in the 74th and 94th minutes to complete the comeback and send Belgium to the quarterfinals. With that, Belgium became the first team to come from two plus goals down to win a World Cup knockout match within 90 minutes, since Portugal had done so against North Korea in the 1966 quarterfinal, when they came from three goals down to win 5-3. Sometimes managers just get everything right, and that was the story of Louis van Gaal in the 2014 World Cup, after he brought Tim Krul on to replace Jasper Sillison in a penalty shootout for Holland. Holland and Costa Rica had played 120 minutes of the World Cup quarterfinal, but nothing separated the sides. In the 120th minute, Louis van Gaal brought on Tim Krul, who had a better record of saving penalties than his teammate Sillison, the team's first choice goalkeeper. Krul went on to save two penalties and booked Holland a place in the semi-final. We thought this through beforehand, said the Dutch boss. Every player in my squad has certain skills and qualities. They don't always overlap, but everyone thought that Tim would be the most appropriate keeper to stop penalties. He has an amazing reach. Last but not least, what about Mario Götze's World Cup winning goal? Götze came onto the field just to do one thing, deny and delay Lionel Messi and Argentina. Götze, however, had other ideas. He chested down a sure lacrosse deep into extra time and stroked it past Sergio Romero, scoring the winner. It was just the second goal in a World Cup final scored in extra time after Andres Iniesta's 116th minute winner in 2010. 
Götze, at just 22 years old, had lived up to the statement of his manager, Yogi Lowe, who had told him, go onto the field and show the world that he's better than Messi. In this case, for one day, he did the ultimate by scoring the deciding goal in the biggest game of his life. On the day, he did overshadow Messi. He made Germany world champions for the fourth time. Let us know in the comments section if there was any other impactful substitutes in World Cup history that you enjoyed.